In my continuing Back to Basics series, we're going to talk about antennas, specifically my vertical antenna, and how I set it up for a Parks on the Air activation. So let's talk about antennas, uh, specifically vertical antennas. And what I have uh, spread out around me are all of the pieces, parts of my vertical antenna setup. Now, I don't use all of these things all at once. Uh, this, is, this is sort of a representation of the extent of which I can uh, deploy a vertical antenna. So, but I'm gonna go through the main pieces, parts, and, and, and tell you what I use uh, specifically for a vertical deployment. I'm using the Wolf River coil system for my vertical antenna, and that would be uh, the uh, Wolf River Silver Bullet 1000 is uh, designed to be used with a whip uh, to get you down uh, from 10 meters down to uh, 80 meters uh, very effectively. They also have a smaller uh, Silver Bullet Mini if you want to use uh, just 10 through 40 meters and not really worry about the uh, 80 meter band. And then finally, the uh, my favorite piece is the uh, Wolf River uh, Sporty 40 coil. Uh, what this does is it has the, the, the proper amount of inductance so that if you take one of these uh, whips and fully extend it, it will get you down to the uh, bottom of the uh, 40 meter band, uh, which is uh, really handy. Uh, so this is, uh, for, for the last six months, this has really been an integral part of my antenna kit because I seldom get onto the 80 meter band uh, with the vertical antenna uh, for a variety of reasons. But um, I like 40 meters a lot, so using the Sporty 40 uh, with the whip uh, works uh, really well for me. So talking about the whips, uh, this is the uh, 213 inch whip. This is the one that's supplied uh, by a Wolf River Coils, uh, similar in design to the MFJ 1979 whip, and also Chameleon makes a 17-foot whip that you can use too for a vertical antenna. Uh, the only downside with the Chameleon whip is that if you choose to use it with the uh, Sporty 40 coil, uh, this whip, 17-foot, is just a few inches too short, and it gets you slightly out of band, out at uh, the top of the band, uh, with this coil. So. A workaround solution that I've found is to add a, just a little bit of wire, about um, eight or nine inches of wire with an alligator clip at the top, uh, brings this whip down in, in resonance. So when we're using a whip uh, with, the sport, with the Sporty 40 coil, we'll want this whip fully extended. Now if you want to use any of the bands above 40 meters, uh, you really don't need the coil. You can go directly with the whip. And uh, what you will do is, um, with the, when this whip is fully extended, it will be, uh, the 213 inch whip will be resonant on the bottom of the 20 meter band, uh, which is really nice. It turns this into a quarter wave vertical antenna for 20 meters. If you want to use this on any of the higher bands, like 17, 15, 12, or 10 meters, all you, all you need to do really is just um, uh, reduce the length of the whip until you're resonant in those particular bands on those frequencies you want. Uh, if you, the easy way to kind of go about that is if you know the formula uh, for um, calculating the length of a quarter wave radiator, you can use those dimensions and um, just adjust the whip, the whip to those dimensions. Or um, out in the field, uh, you can use an antenna analyzer like this. This is the uh, Rig Expert AA230. Uh, I find it very useful in um, adjusting those whips to their particular resonant frequencies. As for mounting the whip, uh, what I'm using is this uh, jaw mount clamp. Uh, this you can find online. I, I picked this one up at a, at a ham fest. I think if you search uh, jaw mount clamp, uh, for a portable antenna, something like that, you'll, you'll come up with it. It's got a nice uh, jaw in here that you can attach to a variety of things like a stand or a spike. A picnic table, barbecue grill, um, <laughs> you name it, you could probably figure it out. It's got a 3 8 by 24 stud on one end. It's got a um, UHF connector on the other end that you can connect to your coax. Uh, really versatile. I found this. This is, this is like my go-to piece of um, hardware in, um, in assembling one of these whips. Uh, for a stand, what I'm using is, uh, this is a very heavy, uh, metal stand that I, I, I picked up uh, years ago is for a uh, feather flag that you typically see in front of businesses sort of as an advertising flag. Uh, very heavy, uh, 
once it's uh, once it's set up, you know, your whip is going to stay up in uh, 20, 30 mile an hour wind gusts without a problem. You can also uh, sandbag this or um, a guy it if you're in if you're in stronger winds uh, works works really well for me. Wolf River also makes a couple of stands, a short, uh, a little bit smaller one, a little bit bigger one. Uh, but I like the I like the feather flag base uh, when I'm when I'm out um, in the field. Uh, you can also use a ground spike too. I've I've used one of those, just a piece of um, metal rod driven into the ground, and then of course with the um, with with the mount here. Now when I'm using the sporty forty coil, I'll, I'll I might. Um, assemble all of this uh, together into one uh, a large assembly uh, just to make uh, band switching uh, really easy. Uh, but the problem is is that um, uh, we'll need to, you know, if we're, in, if we're on a 40 meter band, it works great. But if we want to go to the, one of the higher bands, um, then you got to take this uh, coil out. So what I do is I've got a piece of wire uh, with, a, with a connector in the middle and uh, just add that to my uh, base and there we go now um, when I'm on the higher bands I just uh, have this little piece of wire connected and the RF energy will uh, bypass uh, the the sporty 40 coil if I want to use this coil on the 40 meter band I just remove the clip and the energy is going through the coil and it turns into an instant 40 meter antenna so I don't have to take the whip down put the coil in take the coil out um, in order to change to the 40 meter band and back out again. It's a really, really handy um, little, little piece here. And I've got a video on how this works if you want to see more on uh, this type of, of thing. It's down in, uh, I'll put a link down in the video description down below. Uh, finally, uh, coax, uh, 50 feet of RG8X. I like RG8X because it's relatively inexpensive. Um, works works very, very well on the HF bands and for a uh, since we're working with a quarter wave uh, vertical antenna, we need a ground radio network. Uh, two different things that can, you can use here. Uh, this is um, one of my ground radio networks. It's just uh, four uh, pieces of THHN 14 gauge stranded wire, 16 feet long with an alligator clip. I clip this to the base of the antenna. I've got two of these so I can spread out eight radials 16 feet and that works really, really good. Uh, 40 meters all on up 10 meters, uh, 10 meter band. Um, I don't really need to uh, do any other kinds of adjustments with my radio network. Uh, works just fine on those bands. Uh, but recently I've been using this and this is a piece of bright aluminum, a window screen. And uh, this provides uh, the same function as my radio network, except instead of spreading out eight 16 foot pieces of wire, I just spread out this 36 by 84 inch screen. And uh, I got a little bitty uh, clip here to make sure I got a good electrical connection with the base of the antenna. And it provides the same uh, function as a ground radio network with uh, just using the capacitive coupling of this, this, the large surface area of this window screen. And I got a video on that too, if you want to see more on how this works and, um, and use it for yourself. So that in essence is my vertical antenna setup. So let's go out into the field. I'll set the antenna up and we're going to uh, make some contacts. Today we're down in southern Wisconsin, uh, just west of Madison in the city of Cross Plains at the Cross Plains Ice Age Trail Complex, otherwise known as Cross Plains State Park. Uh, this area here marks uh, the uh, western extent of the glaciation in uh, southern Wisconsin. Parks on the air, CQ Parks on the air, KB9 VBR, Kilo Bravo Niner, Victor Bravo Romeo calling CQ for Parks on the air. Kilo 5 Alpha Zulu Zulu. Kilo 5 Alpha Zulu Zulu, nice 5-5 five five into Wisconsin Park number Kilo 1448. Back to you. QSL on 1448, Mike, you are 5 and 5 into Far West Texas, Tango X-ray QSL. QSL the Far West Texas and thanks a lot for the contact today. 7-3, have a good one. This is KB9 VBR, Parks on the Air, QRZ. Park to park, park to park, WA60EM. 
Is that Whiskey Alpha 6, Oscar Echo Mike? Yes, good afternoon. Uh, Whiskey Alpha 6, Oscar Echo Mike. We are in Kilo Niner 557. Kilo Niner 557, over. QSL, the uh, Kilo 9557 in Oregon. Um, I met a twofer today. Kilo 1448 and Kilo 4238. Back to you. Five, Yankee, Yankee, Charlie. Kilo Echo 5, Yankee, Yankee, Charlie. Oh, beautiful. A 5-9, Wisconsin, park number Kilo 1448. Back to you. Uh, thanks, Michael. 5-9 uh, into New Mexico as well. Uh, nice to hear you. Thanks for being out there. I'll be out in a couple hours. 7-3. All right, yeah, well, thanks a lot for the New Mexico. Yeah, we got a day trip going on today. Ham fest in the morning, park in the afternoon. So, <laughs> glad to get you in the log. That's a solid Saturday right there. Thanks, we'll see you again. Yep, have a good one. Uh, KB9 VBR parks out of the air. Let's go. KB9 VBR parks on the air. QRZ. Whiskey 1 Alpha Echo Oscar. Uh, Whiskey 1 Alpha Echo Oscar. 55 five, Wisconsin. Park number Kilo 1448. Back to you. Copy, Michael. You're a 58 uh, in the Connecticut. Charlie Tango. Back to you. All right. Well, thanks a lot for the Connecticut. You have a great day and 7 3. 7 3. Have a good activation. Oh, it's my pleasure. Yep. Um, we're trying to. <laughs> uh, do I hear a park to park station? Okay, I think there was a couple of them. Was there a Foxtrot Foxtrot station? Kilo Charlie 3, Papa Fox Fox, 57 Wisconsin, park number Kilo 1448. Back to you. Okay, copy Kilo 1448. Uh, you're about a 55 here in Southern Maryland, and my park number is Kilo 1585. Kilo 1585, over Roger the 1585 in Maryland, and thanks a lot for the park today. Hi, Michael. Thanks a lot for your activation plus. Stay safe and seven three. 7-3, have a good one. Uh, were there any other park-to-park -park stations? November 5, Foxtrot, Foxtrot, November, Fox, Fox. Kilo, Bravo, Niner, Julian, Tibet, Uniform, Park-to-Park, -park, November 1, X-ray, India, Park-to-Park. Kilo, Kilo, Kilo. Uh, Kilo November 4, X-Ray Juliet, 5-7 Wisconsin Park, number Kilo 1448. Back to you. Roger, Roger, uh, Michael. You are about a 5-8 and two, two parts here. K-1313 and K-4567 in Palatine, Virginia. QSL. QSL, the 1313 one, three, and 4567. Thanks a lot for the two for today. Thanks for the park as well. Have fun with your activation. 7-3. 7-3. And then there was another park to park out there. The November park to park. November X-Ray 9 Tango. There we go. November X-Ray 9 Tango, 5-5 five, five, Wisconsin park number Kilo 1448. Back to you. Thanks for the 6888 in North Carolina. It's greatly appreciated. Okay, we're going to take a couple park to parks and I have to shut down. We got thunder approaching. Uh, park to parks. Park to parks. Whiskey One Charlie Lima Bravo. Whiskey One Charlie Lima Bravo, uh, 55 Wisconsin, park number Kilo 1448. Back to you. Thanks for the 0891, Whiskey One Charlie Romeo Bravo. You have a great activation today. Thank you, 7-3. 7 any other park to parks? Park to park, November 4th, Papa India House. Well, that wasn't too bad of an activation. A lot of wind here today at uh, Cross Plains State Park. Um, the reason, I was getting kind of a little bit worried here, actually. I, 
all of it, it's, it's a beautiful warm sunny day, it's like 80 degrees, but now all of a sudden I'm feeling a cold breeze on me. And looking at the radar, I know that there's rain activity because I can hear, I see it on the radar. And I get a lot of static crashes on, uh, on 20 meters. So I know this is about the time that I need to shut down. <laughs> Uh, to stay safe. Uh, we ran the vertical antenna, the quarter wave vertical antenna, and I'm using the um, screen door um, ground plane, the screen door counterpoise, and it works well. It that really does. Uh, I think this is going to be just a little bit of a game, game changer for uh, fast setups and fast teardowns. Uh, 58 contacts today. Uh, six of them were on the uh, uh, 15 meter band, 15 uh, wasn't wasn't do, performing too well, and then 50 uh, 50ish on 20 meters. Uh, 20 was really noisy. Uh, we had a lot of static. It was hard to pull people out of the QSB. Um, not the fault of the antenna, of course. It was just just that's what the band conditions were. So um, still good activation. We were glad to get out today. Actually, we were at a ham fest this morning. We were at the uh, uh, the Madison Wisconsin Repeater Association has their had their um, swap fest down in Stoughton, so we were glad to get down to the um, to the Stoughton Ham Fest. It's been a few years, so I'm glad that it's back. Uh, but um, oh my gosh, the wind is really starting to pick up. Uh, we're gonna tear down and head home. We got a two and a half hour drive ahead of us, so hopefully the hopefully we can beat the rain. This is Cape, uh, Michael KB9 VBR. Have a great day in seven three. Look at that sucker bend in the wind. We're getting 20 to 30 mile an hour gusts here. It's crazy.